How long do I need to keep the five precepts intact to start to meditate? This is a very valid question, a good question. Some people say that first of all, you have to develop your sila morality. You have to keep the five precepts, your sila intact before you meditate. But how long? It is very difficult to say how long. So I asked this question to some of my teachers and I also tried to find out what the text says and I got a very reasonable answer. The answer is it does not matter how long. The, the only thing that matters is your sincerity. If you decide right now, I will not harm myself. I will not harm other by else. From that moment, you can start to meditate. If you still have in your mind that you will harm somebody even though you meditate, you cannot really develop deep concentration, peacefulness and insight because you need, to, need the intention not to harm yourself and others. Intentionally make a decision that there is a necessity. Honestly make a decision. I will not harm myself and I will not harm anybody else with sincerity. If you can make the decision from that moment, you are ready to meditate. It all goes together. Sila, Metta and Vipassana, Bhavana. Morality, loving kindness, and insight meditation. They all go together and they cannot, you cannot leave anything separate. You have a tendency to keep things separate. Each aspect of our life is connected with other aspects of our life. This is very important, especially for meditators. Each aspect of our life it is connected to every other aspects of our life whatever you do it will affect your meditation either in a good way or in a bad way this truth is the basis for our awakened life this is the basis someone who was a member of a meditation center in Burma he was a businessman and in his business dealings, he was dishonest. So one of his friends pointed that out. Look, you are meditating to develop your spiritual qualities to attain liberation. Something b b very noble and high, but in your business dealings, you are not really honest. He was cheating a little bit, and everybody does that. He was not exceptionally bad, but he was just normally bad. So this businessman said, the two are different. When I go to the meditation center, I meditate, and I try to develop my spiritual qualities to attain liberation. But when I was, I'm doing businesses, it is business. It is another matter. No way can you do that. Keep this in mind and see what you are doing and see if what you are doing is appropriate to your spiritual ideals. What your ideal is and always keep your ideal in your mind and always check with everything you do whether what you are doing now will harm your spiritual practice or will support your spiritual practice. What counts is how we live our daily life, how constructively we use the resources that we have and how lovingly we treat the people around us. The two keys to successful living are attunement to spirituality and service to our fellow men. The two
two go together, if we harm anybody in any way, it will harm our spiritual practice. Sila has many aspects, keeping five precepts, and whenever we use something, we have to reflect why we are using it. When we eat something, we have to reflect on it. Why do I eat? When we use clothing also, why do I use this clothing? If we don't reflect on that, the greed will take over and we will eat greedily and we will wear clothes with greed just to, sh to show off. Whenever we see or hear something, try to be very mindful so that we will not react automatically. When you go down the road, go down to busy shopping centers. Try to be mindful. See what happens. Our eyes are looking here and there all the time. And we try to listen to many things. We are not trying to be mindful at that moment. And when we are not mindful, then we become more and more agitated. There are other things that hinder our spiritual attainments. One is killing other one's mother. If we kill if if one had killed one's mother, one cannot attain megaphala, the path of fruition. One can meditate and he will not achieve supramundans mundan. One can meditate and he will not achieve supramundan done conscience consciousness because to kill a mother, to kill a father, to kill an arahan and to cause injury to a Buddha affects the mind very badly. Wrong views are very also very important. If somebody thinks that there is no such things as wholesome or unwholesome actions, everything is the same. If somebody believes that if you do something good, it will not give any good result. If you do something bad, it will not give you any bad results. If a person believes that sort of wrong view, he cannot attain any spiritual goal. I know you don't have wrong, those thoughts of wrong views. If even mentally you have accused anybody, any fellow meditator even, if you have any bad thoughts about that per person, remember that and ask for forgiveness. Please tell yourself, I have made a mistake. It is very important to have positive thoughts about each other. If you have any negative thoughts about each other or any other people who are meditating, that unkind negative thoughts can hinder your progress. That's why we, when we sit and meditate, first of all, we try to develop this feeling of belonging connectiveness, support, loving kind thoughts. It is very important to do that. Whenever we sit and meditate, whether in group or alone, first think of those people at and try to develop metta for them. I support their practice. If you don't support their practice, then you feel isolated. You feel very selfish when some meditators accuse each other. I have noticed that that causes them guilty feelings and agitation and that destroys their concentration. This is another important point here. Somebody asked me a similar question a few days ago. There are some people who have been meditating for quite a long time but mostly they are doing only one thing for example sitting and trying to be mindful all the time of breathing breathing in and out just to one thing the buddha said kataro satipat hana form 
foundation of mindfulness. We have to practice all four foundation of mindfulness, not just one. To really develop deep insight, we need to develop all four. The first is Kaya Nupasana, mindfulness of the body, and I will go into that later in detail. The second is Vedana Nupasana, mindfulness of feelings. Even in Kaya Nupasana, there are many aspects. Another is Sita Nupasana, mindfulness of thoughts. Another is Dhamma Nupasana, which generally means the content of any consciousness. Try to develop as much as possible all four. The Satipatthana meditation is all-inclusive. It is not exclusive. Samatha meditation is exclusive. You choose one thing and you leave everything else out. But Vipassana meditation is that first you start with one thing slowly and slowly. You take in more and more. Be aware of everything happening in your body and in your mind, in your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, everywhere. Whenever we want to learn how to do something, we need a method from somebody. We have enough methods in the Bali text, and there are a lot of teachers around as well. To learn the method is not very difficult anymore. However, one important thing is to clarify whether you have understand it well or not. You must ask questions. Don't just listen and make notes and go away. Ask questions. This is the best way to learn, either in meditation or any other kind of learning. Those who really ask more questions, I mean really thinking and asking questions, really listening, do understand more, and asking again and again until you get it very clear is the best way to learn. Discussion is very important. Learn the method. Ask questions to clarify and practice. And as you practice, you will find some difficulties coming up. Whenever you have difficulty, ask your teacher. Whenever you have difficulty, ask your teacher. Talk with your teacher. Take their advice. In most cases, if you keep on practicing, you get your own answers. This is true. We lived in the forest most of the time, and we were very far away from our teachers. We can only see our teachers once a month. So when we meditate and have difficulties, we say, I will ask this to my teacher when I go to see him. And then we go on meditating. And one day, the, the answer came in the mind, and we don't have to ask anywhere, anymore. With more other of my students also, I go to their city sometimes, and when I go away and they have difficulties, they write down their questions about their difficulties, thinking that I will ask my teacher when he comes, but they keep meditating really honestly, honestly, wholeheartedly, and then they found their own answers. So when I go and see them, many of them say, I wrote down a lot of questions to ask you when you came, but as I keep meditating, I found my own answers. So now I don't have many questions, just one or two. If you keep meditating, you will find your own answer. A good friend, a good teacher is a good friend. A teacher and a friend, they are the same. Not two different things. Even Buddha talked about himself as a good friend. To have a good teacher, to have a good friend, to be in touch with the teacher, to ask him 
questions to take his advice all this is very important without a teacher and without a friend without a guide it will be very difficult for us to go on this path we'll make a lot of mistakes we'll sidetrack a lot in the beginning stage of meditation naturally we will try to keep our mind concentrated on one object for example breathing in and out we try to keep our mind there as much as possible as we keep our mind there slowly and slowly we develop more concentration our mind stays on that object longer and longer as our mind becomes a little bit calm we can see the changes in the nature of their sensation of this object even in this mindfulness of breathing there are many steps if you do each step systemically it is much easier to develop mindfulness and concentration for example the first thing you know is that you are breathing if you know that you are breathing then you have taken one step because most of the time although we are breathing we don't know it why because we are thinking about something else all the time thinking thinking what do we think about most of the time sometimes we don't even know what we think about most of the time we don't know what we think about it happens so unconsciously whenever we know that we are breathing it helps to bring our mind back to this present moment i'm breathing that is one step the next step is breathing in and you know that you are breathing in breathing out you know that you are breathing out another step breathing in and out the next step is when you breathe in it takes about three or four seconds if you breathe in slowly breathing out takes another two or three seconds in that time two or three seconds your mind can can go out many times to help your mind not to go away you can do another thing you can break down your breathing in into five seconds so that you can be mindful five times you can bring back your mind five uh, you can bring back your mind five times when you breathe in and also the same time same thing when you breathe out you count five times it helps you to be more aware of your breath there is a misunderstanding about this method some people say when you breathe in and out count one and when you breathe in out again count two that means that you are counting how many times you breathe it also helps you keep your mind on breathing but the real purpose is that you are trying to be more aware of your in breath so that your mind cannot go away in between if you are aware of your in breath five times then it is more difficult to your mind to wander away sometimes when you breathe in you are aware in the beginning and you are aware you are not aware in the middle or and in the end it can happen so in order for that not to happen you count in your mind again and again five times at least it can be more than five that the maximum should not be more than ten because if you count ten times then you count very fast and it causes agitation depending on how long you breathe in and how long you breathe out you count a minimum five times and somewhere between five and ten the number does not matter the number does not matter you need to understand the purpose of counting the purpose is to keep your mind again and again on the breathing 
Don't try to reach the number. This is very important. Don't try to count faster so that you will finish counting as you finish breathing. Just count naturally, evenly. Keep your mind there and when you keep your mind there, where do you keep it? Keep your mind on the sensation, not on the concept. Breathing is actually a concept, an idea. A Bali, in Bali, it is called Banati and I will explain this word again and again. Banati and Paramatta. These two words need to be explained quite a lot because in many cases, instead of keeping the mind on Paramatta, most meditators keep the mind on para, n Panati because that is uh, what they have been doing, keeping the mind on Panati. I have tried to translate this word many times and I discussed about this with Venerable Nabani Suti. D means concept. What does concept mean? When you hear the word concept, how do you understand it? A word, a name? We tried to find out the meaning and we couldn't really find a real exact translation in English. And so, Venerable Nanavi Suti suggested the word a word a name we tried to find out the meaning and we couldn't really find a really exact translation in English and so Honorable Nanavisati suggested the word designation names are Panati any name is Panati in and out direction is Panati. When you call something L, the name is Panati because in fact what you call L, it is a combination of many elements. So when you take things together, give it a name or understand it as one thing, then you are understanding Panati, not real Paramatta. When you breath in the direction is not important. Naming it is not important because both of them are panati. What is paramatta is what you feel directly. What do you feel when you breath in? Where does that sensation, that feeling happen? Sensation is what is real. What do you feel when you breath in, breath out? Something gently touching, rubbing, pushing. These sensations are the real things to keep your mind on. Temperature also. Coolness, warmth around your nose somewhere you can feel something happening when you breathe in. And when you breathe out. Keep your mind there and try to keep your mind there many many times bringing it back as you breath in and as you breath out do that for a short time only because even the counting is another panati numbers are very panati not paramatta when we use the numbers we break down our breath into smaller pieces so that we can be more continuously aware of it that is the most important point, to be continuously aware of the breath without any break in between. If you understand the purpose of a method, then you can let go of the rest of the things and just do that. Keep your mind on when the air comes in and goes out. Keep your mind on where it touches. Keep it there continuously without any break. Try your best. Only in the beginning try to count what to say in and out. But after a while, let go of in out and let go of the con counting and try to be just with the breath without any ideas. As you develop a certain level of concentration, 
you become aware of the changing nature of the breath. I mean the sensation. Even what we call breath is vanity. What we directly know is the sensation. Check and see whether you are doing that when you are meditating. Where is your mind? What are you thinking about? If you have any questions about this, it is very important to ask and make it clear because if you are not keeping your mind on paramatta, then although your mind can become calm, peaceful and concentrated, you cannot see reality. There are two paths in meditation. The first path is to calm down, to develop concentration so that your mind does not get distracted to calm down the thoughts and keep the mind on one subject, one object, that is the first object, the first purpose of meditation. And the second which is more important is to understand the way things are, whether you call it reality or whatever, to understand the way things are, sensations thoughts, feelings, to understand things as they are. If we keep our mind on vanity, we can get calm and peaceful and concentrated, but we will not see Nama, mentality, as Nama and Rupa, materiality as Rupa. We are not trying to be in touch with the nature of Nama and Rupa. We are just keeping our mind on vanity, a designation, shape, size, small or big, are vanity, east, west, north, south, and are vanity. To give you more idea of what vanity means, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. They are all vanity, just names. When you meditate and keep your mind on what you can really directly experience, all that disappears. Sometimes you don't even know where you are sitting, whether you are facing east or west. We don't know that anymore. Sometimes we very strange feelings happen. You don't even know who you are sometimes because who you are is another idea you created in your mind. But to get to that point, you need to have deep insight or of anatta, non-soul, non-self. When your mind has developed this wisdom, your mind has developed this wisdom of anatta, sometimes you don't even know your name. You have to think about it for a while. It takes time to think about it, but that will come later. If you have any questions about paramatta and panati, please ask. It is very important. We discuss about this in the night sometimes. It takes many days to discuss. Very interesting. Venerable Nama Visati and I, we sit and discuss about Panati and Paramatta and the, the object of uh, Vipassana. Sometimes it takes a long time. We forget about time even. We sit and discuss about it from 9 o'clock in the evening, thinking that we will have a discussion of about an hour and we forget about time. Because time is panati. When we look at the clock, we realize it is about 11.30. If you have more questions, please ask. Now is the time to ask questions. Is there any questions? Please feel very free.